Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm here today with Dan Pallone mm -hmm. from Element 84, a company that specializes in iPhone and iPad development. Yep. So we're here today to talk about testing, unit testing and logic right. testing. Uh, and obviously, any developer wants to have a good app, a clean, well-functioning right. app. Right. So what's, what's unique or different about testing in iPhone and iPad apps? So with iPhone and iPad apps, um, you're going out through the iTunes store, and the app has to work. And so what we want to talk about today is basically moving this from this, you know, oh, when do you do testing of your app, to kind of just pulling in as a, a first-class citizen, part of the development process, mm -hmm. and make sure that when that app goes out to the store, it's quality. I mean, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you push out a buggy app and then you have to recover from it. And the time, right? The time, time is money in that situation, right? right? right. I, any, any time you can spend making sure this app is quality up front yeah. is going to pay for itself of not having to wait to get through the approval process again to fix a bug and everybody's just, you know, calling you all kinds of stuff in the, in the uh, reviews. Yeah, nobody likes low yeah. reviews. Right. All right, let's get started. Okay. All right, Dan, so today we're going to be talking about testing iPhone apps. Right. And uh, yeah, I could be a little crass and say, well, you know, if I'm working on professional development. That's that's somebody else's problem. The testers are going to do it. Yeah, um, I really don't want to be the like the test guy here, um, but really to do professional development. And if you look at kind of like best practices that have worked, and if you look at web development, like Ruby on Rails kind of mm -hmm. stuff, um, or any kind of Java with the automated testing, um, it really as a developer, it's once you start going in that direction, it's kind of like source control. Like if you're a professional developer, once you start using source control, you couldn't imagine doing it any other way. Right. Testing is similar. Like we're going to be talking about, it's it's the only way to kind of build yourself a safety net that you feel like I can make these changes and I know things are still working mm -hmm. and you're actually way more comfortable going in changing code, making sure things happen, um, than if you didn't have those tests. And we're not talking testing like, hey, I did this, I added this view. How does right. that look on the phone? Right. 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 No, no. This would be this is fully automated. Um, you don't want to spend your time testing, right? Like that testing just sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. But. Uh, Professional opinion, um, but the like once you start building an app, it starts getting complex really fast. And yeah. There's so many different code paths, um, and once you release that app, so you've got this approval time right on mm -hmm. on the app store. And when you push your app out there uh, for iPhone, you've got the app store. Um, you push your app out there. There's a period of time. If there's a bug from the day that thing gets dropped, you have the time to fix the bug and then resubmit it back, go through the approval process, and get it back up there. Right. The approval process has gotten a lot faster, but you've got this window of time. And um, my brother has an app that he sells. It's a you know, professional app. Um, he pushed out. He had done a bunch of testing on it, pushed it out, yeah. and it had a bug, and it only affected a small percentage of his users. He was getting a couple emails a minute. Um, they had, he had 65 oh. updates as soon as it was, or 6,500 updates as soon as it was released. Wow. And that was just users, and like without fail, like the bad reviews started coming in, like right. don't update it crashes or it wiped out my data kind yep. of thing. And there's this panic of how do you fix it, and you just. And it's all after the fact at that and point. It's going to cost you money. Like yeah. it's the only, bottom line is it's going to cost you money and it's going to cost you time. It's going right. to cost you users. All right. So what are we going to be working with for testing today? So I um, wrote a little app that we'll use for testing. It's called What's Hot. And um, it goes out and Google makes available in their search trends um, an Atom feed. Mm -hmm. And so this goes out and it grabs the Atom feed and uh, displays kind of the trending topics in the last hour. So this is, this is what Google's telling us is, is kind of people are looking for, searching for yep. what's hot right yep. now. Okay. And so then um, you know, if we tap on one of these, uh, it'll go over and it'll basically follow the feed information that, mm -hmm. that Google gives us. And it'll pull down the trend of um, you know, what's the, the actual trend look like in terms of popularity. Right. Um, and then you know top news levels uh, or top news articles and whatnot, and then where it was you know where it's so complexity wise, it's it's not a very complex app that we're working with here. Right. You know, Google's doing all the heavy lifting on the right. data end for us. But it's strangely addictive. Yeah. Um, so how often do you check it? So <laughs> too often. Um, <laughs> yeah, I figure most people watching this uh, probably already have some app developed or some percentage of an app developed. Yeah. Um, and they you know kind of looking to retrofit testing. So right. we're going to start with the first piece of this app, where basically that table, that scrolled list, um, that table view, we have that implemented, and basically we're going to retrofit testing into that. All right. um, we'll talk about how that hurts. And then um, 
we'll kind of switch this around. So if, if we're going to treat testing as like a first class citizen, how can we go ahead and expand it out? Okay, so we're going to start with retrofitting and we're going to work our way up towards how we start doing that from the beginning. Right, if you were thinking app. about testing from the beginning, and we'll use that approach to kind of add that detailed view where we fetch all the information about the one you selected. All right, well, let's get started. All right.